What if I told you there's a better way to train employees outside the typical slide deck or online module? The solution, virtual reality. From reducing training costs to making learning safer and more effective, VR solves a lot of problems. But launching a VR training program can feel like a daunting task. From navigating hardware options, to finding the right content and managing devices, there's a lot to keep in mind. Over the last few years at ArborXR, we've helped hundreds of companies launch and scale successful VR training programs that deliver results, real results. So in this video, Video, I'll break down the exact process you can use to implement virtual reality for employee training in your business, from selecting the right hardware to measuring success and scaling your program. Let's dive in. All right, let's talk about why VR training works in the first place. There are four main benefits organizations see when implementing VR training properly. First, it's significantly faster. Traditional training might take days or weeks, but VR can condense that dramatically, getting employees up to speed much quicker. Second, retention rates are through the roof compared to traditional training methods. When people physically do something, even in virtual reality, they remember it much better than just reading about it or watching a video. Third, it improves safety. We've seen a major reduction in workplace accidents when companies implement VR training, especially for dangerous tasks. Employees can practice risky procedures in a completely safe environment. And fourth, when scaled properly, VR training leads to lower overall training costs. The upfront investment might seem high, but the long-term savings are substantial. We've seen these benefits play out numerous times. Mars Wrigley, for example, saw approximately a $20 million ROI from just their VR training pilot alone. We've also seen similar success stories with other big companies like Walmart, Pfizer, and more implementing VR training programs with us as well. Now, before you rush out and buy a bunch of headsets, let's first establish your why. This is absolutely crucial. And in our experience, it's where most companies go wrong. Many organizations make the mistake of starting with excitement around VR technology without defining the problem they're trying to solve. In our experience, this always leads to failure. VR quickly becomes a waste of time and resources if there isn't clarity on the business problem it's solving. An XR leader at a top five pharma company recently told us, people don't care about the tech. They care about whether it makes their job easier and it works the first time. So how do you identify your why? very simple. Just ask yourself, what problem am I trying to solve? And let your answer guide your implementation process. For example, manufacturing companies with the goal of improving safety should be focusing on transforming their most dangerous processes to VR. That gives you a really clear direction rather than just implementing VR because it seems cool. And when it comes to convincing decision makers, include stakeholders, end users, and IT in defining that goal. Make sure everyone aligns on the problem they're trying to solve. Later down the line, you can put decision makers in headset so they can experience it firsthand, there's nothing more convincing than that. Once you've established your why, it's time to choose your content. This is where you'll need to decide between off-the-shelf versus custom content. Off-the-shelf content is where we use already existing VR applications. The benefits are a quick start, cost effectiveness, and it's ideal for simple training needs, but for more complex cases, that won't be enough. Authoring platforms provide a middle ground with some customization. They let you tailor existing frameworks while keeping costs and timelines really manageable. Custom modules are ideal for complex or niche use cases where you need something specifically designed for your unique processes. Some of the most successful XR programs end up working with an experienced ISV in order to help build custom content and help guide them. And finally, internal development is best for large organizations with diverse VR needs that require having an in-house team. When sourcing VR content, the key is finding developers with experience in your specific industry. Working with a developer that has successfully run multiple pilots at an organization like yours dramatically improves your chances of proving ROI. Check out our directory in the link below. If you want a seasoned development team to help you build content for your XR program, definitely check it out. All right, now let's move on to selecting the right hardware. This is really crucial because the wrong hardware can derail your entire program. First, you obviously need to match your content needs with specific hardware features. For example, if you need high resolution displays for really detailed oriented work, that's going to steer you towards certain and headsets. And if you need portable headsets for field training, that's another consideration entirely. But when it comes to costs, standalone headsets are often more affordable than tethered ones. But when calculating costs, you should always include maintenance and updates as well in your budget. App compatibility is another crucial factor. You need to make sure your hardware supports your chosen content. You can also ask your content vendors for hardware recommendations. They typically know what works best for their software. We've also got a whole headset guide linked 
linked below that can help guide you. Once you've got your content and hardware figured out, you'll need a way to manage everything. This is where an MDM or mobile device management system like ArborXR comes in. An MDM is the backbone of your VR program, allowing you to manage devices, content, and users. The problem is that traditional MDMs don't work well for VR content because they're not designed specifically for headsets. These systems lack a lot of VR specific capabilities. When choosing an MDM, there are several important features to look for. First, you need to be able to manage devices at scale, installing apps and files remotely and updating multiple headsets simultaneously. Your MDM should also have an open ecosystem supporting different device types and content, making it easier to scale as your program grows. You don't want to get vendor locked. We've seen it too many times and it can really kill your XR program. Security is also critical. The platform should meet enterprise standards to protect data and maintain your privacy. Another crucial factor is the in-headset experience. What makes VR-specific MDMs like ArborXR different is the ability to create a kiosk mode that delivers a distraction-free learning environment. This lets you control exactly what users see and do inside the headset, removing distractions and keeping learners focused only on the content itself. Ease of use is often overlooked, but incredibly important. If your IT team and trainers can't figure out how to use it, your program will stall. And of course, another important factor is connecting VR to your existing learning infrastructure. With ArborXR Insights, you can integrate your VR training directly with over 500 LMS platforms, track learner performance in real time, and generate comprehensive analytics that prove ROI to stakeholders. Cost effectiveness becomes more apparent as you scale, and having dependable customer support will save you countless headaches down the road. At ArborXR, our platform is specifically designed for managing VR programs, and it includes all the features I listed. If you want to learn more about how it works, then feel free to click the first link in the description. Now let's talk about implementation. The best approach is to start with a pilot and a proof of concept. It's a really low risk way to test VR in a controlled environment. For example, you might roll out a safety training module to just one department before implementing it company-wide. Focus on achievable goals during these initial tests and use the results to demonstrate value to the stakeholders. Building a community of VR champions within your organization is also vital. Assign internal leaders to the VR program to own the process and have them guide teams through initial steps. As people experience VR, they naturally become advocates for it, creating momentum for your program. And finally, let's discuss how to measure success. You need to track key metrics to prove the value of your VR training program, of course. These might include completion rates compared to traditional training, time spent in modules, assessment scores, how quickly employees reach proficiency, and whether skills learned in VR successfully transfer to real world environments. Before solutions like ArborXR Insights, organizations had to stitch together manual logs, anecdotal feedback, and disconnected platforms to understand learner performance and program ROI. Now you can capture all this data automatically in one unified analytics platform, giving executives the concrete evidence they need to fund and expand your VR program. You should also track business metrics like reduction in training time, decrease in workplace errors or safety incidents, cost savings compared to previous methods, and employee satisfaction levels. To know if your project is successful, you need to define what good looks like before you even start. Have regular check-ins with stakeholders to gather feedback and make adjustments along the way. And most importantly, document and share wins to build momentum for further expansion. And there you have it, the full guide on how to implement VR training for employees in your organization. Now, if you're ready to start leveraging virtual reality at your organization or scale your existing programs, then click the link in the description to learn how ArborXR can help you manage all of your devices, content, and users from a straightforward platform. We've helped hundreds of organizations implement successful VR training programs, and we'd love to do the same for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.